I recently saw an advert on Instagram for a new point and shoot camera that almost looked to me to be a little bit like a reusable disposable camera. And I thought I'd pick it up to see if this could be a viable everyday point and shoot camera. That camera is this, the Rito Ultra Wide and Slim. The Ultra One Slim is a tiny and crazy light camera from the company Rito, who currently have two cameras on the market, this one and a really cool looking 3D camera, which I'm definitely interested in picking up soon. It's a fully plastic camera that is so ridiculously light. It only weighs 69 grams, which is about three AA batteries when it doesn't have any film in it. And it fits into the pocket of literally all of my trousers or jackets. So it could easily be carried around everywhere. It comes in five different colors, the classic variants of cream and also charcoal, which is what I picked up as well as what Rito describes as Vogueish colors of murky blue, pastel pink, and muddy yellow. Murky and muddy probably not being particularly complimentary adjectives I'd want to describe cameras with, but there you are. Body-wise, it has a shutter button, a film advance wheel, a film rewind button, and lever, and of course, a little switch to open the film door. The camera only costs 30 pounds. It's incredibly cheap, and that's why I liken it to a reusable disposable camera. But because it is that price, don't be expecting a super high quality product. It does feel a little bit like a toy. It is completely plastic. And because it is so light, it really doesn't feel anywhere near a premium product. Product. In fact, the Rito Ultra Wide and Slim lives up to its name so much that I actually kind of find it a little bit too slim to hold easily. And because of my giant awkward claws having to hold this small camera and the lens being so incredibly wide, a lot of the shots that I got back do actually look like they were taken by your 60 year old family member who's never used a camera before. And some of the images have a little bit of my finger in the lower right hand corner. The website does advertise the camera as being able to capture wide views and put everything in the picture, but my fingers holding the camera were not exactly what I was hoping that would mean. I honestly think that it's my knuckles like down here that you can see, but I don't have any other comfortable way of holding the camera. It's there in a lot of the shots. I can only apologize for that. I could crop into the images, but I feel like that detracts from the point of this being an ultra wide camera. It's something at least to note if you're thinking of picking one up be careful when you hold the camera that you are being sure that your fingers aren't gonna end up in the final shot. Here's a little selection of some images from the two rolls that I shot with the camera. Just so you're aware, both rolls were Kodak Ultramax 400. So as you can see from that, the images from the Rito Ultra One Slim aren't actually that bad and they definitely are incredibly wide. The lens is a 22 millimeter focal length, which is obviously where the wide field of view comes from. And it has a fixed aperture of F11. It's focus free, so it's simply set to infinity. And because it is F11 and so wide, everything farther away than one meter should be an acceptable focus. If it's closer than a meter, you're just not gonna be able to focus on it. It also has a fixed shutter speed of 1 1 25th of the second, meaning that no matter the conditions you're shooting in, the same exposure will be captured every single time that you press the shutter. This is typically fine for outdoors as even if you're overexposing the shot, film generally handles that well. But for indoor scenarios, unless you're shooting a very high speed film, your shots will most likely end up quite underexposed. It worked quite well for these shots of little pockets of light I encountered just going about my daily life, but I wouldn't want to use it indoors regularly, particularly as the camera has no 
built-in flash and no way of adding any flash accessory either. Rito themselves recommend using ISO 100 or 200 films under bright sunlight and ISO 400 or above for sunny or cloudy days. The lens is not particularly sharp, but for £30 I wasn't expecting anything special. I definitely think that the image quality is similar to something you'd get from a £10 or £15 single use disposable style camera, just without the added benefit of having a flash, which a lot of those cameras do have. The lens flares incredibly drastically as well if the sun is directly in shot. It's almost like a full circular flare that gives a very unique look that I've never really encountered before. If you like that, then Maybe that's a bonus, but I'm not totally sure that it really adds to any of the images. The images did have quite a nice contrast to them though, and I think the camera paired with Kodak Ultramax 400 a lot of the time gave me a look that I actually really enjoyed. There is a pretty strong vignette, which I don't hate for the subjects, the images that I took and was sort of expecting there to be with the camera, but it is just something to note. The actual process of shooting with the camera is something that I didn't massively enjoy, however. Other than the obvious cheap feel of the body and the size of it, which may be an advantage to some being able to be so portable, but worked out as a bit of a con for me as it was so wide and small, the camera just doesn't feel particularly satisfying to shoot with. The very small slit in the take-up spool is tiny and I have quite chubby little fingers, which found it a little bit tricky to load quite quickly, particularly if you're outside with cold hands. The film advance wheel also feels pretty cheap and it can often feel like you're not advancing film or like the film is really grinding on the inside of the camera and just sort of being torn to shreds. The shutter button also is not particularly satisfying to press, which I know is not something you're looking for, but can be quite a welcome bonus. You sort of have to push it below the top of the camera for it to take a shot. And also the little film counter on the top is sort of like a raised bubble, almost like a spirit level. And I know I don't have the best eyesight in the world, but I couldn't for the life of me while I was out shooting, work out exactly what frame I was on, just sort of the general position in the role. But on the plus side of that, I did actually manage to get 37 and 39 full images, respectively, from the two rolls of film that I shot. I'm not totally sure as I don't think I've ever got 39 images out of a 35 millimeter roll before, but somehow this little camera managed it. In conclusion, I tried really hard to like the camera as I think a little reusable disposable style camera with an ultra wide lens 
could be a pretty cool thing to take on holidays or family trips because it is so simple to use. But the overall experience and getting the images back really just didn't do enough to sell me on the camera. If you've got small hands, you want a cheap and ridiculously light and small camera that you can take anywhere that is fully automatic, you don't have to think about anything, then yeah, this could be great for you. It fits all of those boxes. It gives a very nostalgic look with some serious flaring, a heavy vignette, and generally quite a soft image. So again, if that's what you're after, this could well be 30 pounds very well spent. Or if you're constantly picking up disposable cameras that are single use and you don't really use the flash feature that comes with them, this will definitely save you money in the long run whilst I think ultimately giving you a similar image quality. But really for me, this camera is probably destined to become a mainstay on a shelf somewhere as a little retro gray ornament, not for shooting rolls of film especially with how expensive film is getting now. That's it for this week. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and maybe consider subscribing if you want to see some more content from me. I've got film photography stuff coming up, some filmmaking stuff coming up, so a real mix. So if you like either that, maybe consider subscribing. Stay safe, everyone. Stay happy. And I'll see you in the next one.